I asked for strength. And God gave me difficulties to make me strong. I asked for wisdom. And God gave me problems to solve. I asked for courage. And God gave me dangers to overcome. I asked for love. And God gave me troubled people to help. My prayers were answered. The law of attraction is just fascinating because a man is as he thinks. If you think you'll never get rich, there is no chance on earth it will happen. If you think you'll never grow as a person, guess what? Well, it won't happen either. If you think you'll never achieve your goals, you won't. You need to change the way you think. Otherwise, your life will never change. So this is a big one because when it's something you really want, everything that comes with the vibration of desire shows up too, right? Then we go, oh, I really want it, I really want it. And now what if it doesn't happen? Instead of trying to negate that, I think that's what we tend to do is we're like, oh, shove all those thoughts down, shove those fears down, only stay in the high vibration. You get to and you maintain the high vibration because you're diving into what is causing a potential dip. I call it learning the lesson before you have to learn the lesson. And I love this one so much because it kind of keeps us not on our toes, but vibrationally aware of what shows up. Because remember, everything that shows up after we set a manifestation in motion is not there to screw us up. You set a manifestation, everything that shows up afterwards is feedback. It is juicy understanding to what you need to understand, to heal, to further create so that you can not only get to your manifestation, if it is in the highest good of all, but you can maintain it. Sometimes we want to rush things, right? And that's okay because we can quantum leap our abundance. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the first question I would want to know is what is the rush? Why are we in a hurry? What am I afraid is going to happen if it doesn't happen soon enough? What are my parameters? And most importantly, which is really my answer, what are my rules? Do you really believe it can happen? If you're like, I want a million dollars by tomorrow, you have a hell of a lot of rules to break, right? But if you're like, I need $5,000 in the next week, maybe you're like, I can get on board with that. It's about understanding and condensing the time frame as we break the rule, right? But we don't want to create a rule that feels so far away that it's inobtainable in the moment. So instead we go, what is possible? And then as soon as we can break that rule again, we go, okay, what's even bigger than that? What's even more possible? It's not just about the blocks that you experience and you feel, it's about moving forward as well. Sometimes in manifestation, it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. We tend to only look towards what we want. In self-development, we tend to only look at what's wrong with us. And we need to swap those two. So in manifestation, we go, okay, what's, what's the holdup? What are the rules and beliefs I live by? And in self-development, we need to go, what are my strengths? And let me strengthen those instead of sitting there and judging myself for all my weaknesses. But when you combine those two, because really self-development is in essence a form of self-mastery and manifestation is self-mastery, at least, you know, in the, in the philosophy that I hold, well, then the two marry quite well together, but sometimes they get a little like crossed over incorrectly. The universe doesn't want you to chase it. The universe wants you to realize that you are already it and just be stop chasing the things you want you are implying that they are running away from you instead become the things you want and attract them that's the only way you can get what you want if you are the universe understand that you have everything already so stop acting like you don't if you know you have what you want already by law, those things will begin to appear in your physical reality. But any amount of doubt will slow the process down. Know what you are. You are so powerful. The universe loves gratitude. The more you're grateful for what the good is in your life, the more good you get to be grateful about. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, if somebody gives you a present and you're, or gives me a present and I say, oh my God, I hate that color and it doesn't fit, and you know, that person will never give me another present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you say, oh, it's wonderful and thank you, I really adore it, it's great, that person is probably going to want to buy you a present every time they see something they think you would like. And it's like that with the universe. The universe loves gratitude. Where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Period. Yes. So then the stronger the emotion that you have to some problem or condition or person in your life, the more you're paying attention to them. So they captured your attention. So you're giving your power away wow. to that person, right? Because they're capturing your attention. Wow. 
So then there's an energetic connection to every person, everything, everything in your past, present reality has your energy connected to it. So now mm -hmm. this is the significance when a person really decides to be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memory of the past, the hardest part about it is all of a sudden becoming conscious and not making the same unconscious yes. choice. Everything you desire is one vibration away. It is one shift, it is one movement. All of the personal things you want in your own frequency of abundance will absolutely find you if you focus on raising your vibration having your dominant frequency be as high as possible and to me honestly although there's times where Oliver and I work on something specific we've kind of reached this state where we're just vibing high all the time and magical things just come because they already exist on the frequency in which we usually are on so that's where you go I want the miracle manifestations Mandy cool get your vibration high enough to where they exist right because no matter what there's an entire reality available to our frequency at any given moment and an entirely different reality and an infinite number of them at any moment that we shift our frequency. It doesn't take 10 years to change. It takes a moment to change. It takes us 10 years to build the courage to make the choice to change. So let's just condense the time frame, shall we? But what happens if the white fish succeeds in eating up the dark fish? The white fish disappears as well as the dark one because the white one is only there in relation to the dark. So then, if these two fishes, as it were, wake up, if this one wakes up and this one wakes up, which is called awakening in Buddhism, they realize they're one. In other words, they go together. They're inseparable from each other. And this realization is that experience that underlying all that is negative in the world, all that is in a way painful and evil, there is a kind of necessity to it. It goes with the good. It is necessary for the good. Disorder is necessary for the manifestation of order, just as you must have, say, a black background to show up a light figure. And then when one sees that, a profound transformation takes place in one's attitude.